<laughs> hey, Jackie Long is our guest, and that means when Jackie Long is our guest, she doesn't come empty-handed, courtesy of ex-husband Ron, right? So, and one thing we know about Ron is I think Ron has stock in uh, insulin companies because he's always sending sugar <laughs> into the studio. So you got yeah. two different forms of M&Ms. Some Old Bay Gold Whales. Thank you, Ron. You're a good man. And Jackie why would, always transports And them. why would they put it at your end of the table as opposed to yeah. John Gilstrap? Because nobody wants day. to hear you guys snacking during the show. Why not? Because the microphone picks up those sounds, and this is what it's... <laughs> we don't object. We don't mind. <laughs> I think nobody, it's real, it gives a real human touch to the show. <laughs> it does, yeah. It gives the sound of chewing to the show, which nobody wants. Nobody. So, in other words, that's his excuse, John. Exactly. We're, you're not going to share now. After so. the show, you're welcome to eat all you like. After the show. By the way, after the show on the TV side, we go to uh, Berkeley County Youth Fair coverage, which we'll be doing all week long uh, right at 10 o'clock. And each weekday morning at 8 with Mary Beth Blair recapping the previous day's coverage and uh, award winners and activities and then previewing that day's. Jackie, good morning to you. Good morning. First, let me say... Um Bill read me Damon's comment on about. <laughs> I, I take high offense to that comment, but I think he was just doing a disclaimer. That's yes, all. exactly. And then the second thing is uh, about the youth fair. I participated in 4-H with the sewing for a long time. So, so go ahead and say the teacher's name. You were, you were talking about oh, the Arliss teacher. Woodward. Oh, Arliss yeah. Woodward. Oh, fantastic teacher. That's mm -hmm. Phil's mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. I saw her the other day, as a matter of fact. Fantastic teacher. That's so, great. You always yeah. remember the good teachers. Yeah. Right? Speaking of uh, remembering good teachers, I heard a report on my way in Washington, D.C. Uh, radio. They were talking to a person who was running one of the school districts around there. I think it was Arlington. I'm not sure. And they said they were at about 97.5% for teacher positions filled, which is the best they've been in a while. How are we doing here in Berkeley County here in just the final couple of weeks before school starts? I think with professionals, we're, we're almost there. For service personnel, last week, uh, Dr. Schooley told me we had 82 positions still to fill. Out of how many, Jackie? Um, there's about 1,300 service okay. personnel. Yeah, but so, No, you uh, say service. Is that custodians? Uh, and secretaries, cafeteria? aides, custodians. Okay. Um, is that cooks as well? Cooks, okay. yes, mm -hmm. every, all the gamuts, bus operators. So every every classification has become difficult to fill. There are some more uh, than others, uh, bus operators, classroom aides. Mm -hmm. All all salary related? Is that the root of the problem of filling? Um, salary, um, any kind of compensation, and actually some discipline. You know, discipline's tough. You can't. You can't do a lot to um, discipline a student, and it makes it difficult for anybody in a classroom or on a bus or even in the cafeteria line. So, Why, why is it so difficult to discipline a student now? I, I, it wasn't when we were kids. No. You, did, you, you know, there are many, many good parents out there, but sometimes parents defend their child before they defend the system and or the teacher or... Um, the administrator and don't want their child disciplined like maybe they need to be disciplined. Can we pass some type of rule that says if your kid has this many issues at school, three, let's say three, right? Then you need to accompany your kid to school for a couple of days until the kid settles down or the kid can't come back. Well, uh, I'll give you an example of that. Years and years ago, uh, we passed that. There was something passed in the legislature, and I think Pat Murphy had a hand in that, that um, – for attendance, if a student missed so many days, um, they went in front of the court, but then their parent had to come to the school with them. At that time, I was at North Middle School, and we had a parent uh, come in with a student, and the parent was twice as bad as the student was, so it, it just made the class a complete chaos. So that that didn't work out too well. So. <laughs> well, well, doesn't the, Apple the board don't of fall too far. In the Board of Education, specifically in the position where you can pass policies that say that under these, exactly what Rob was saying, that under these circumstances, that this is the result? Like, you get you get expelled if something happens or if, if the kid doesn't is acting out in class, the teacher can sit him in the hallway. That, that kind of decision, isn't that something that, that we, we all We do together? have those policies, but those policies can't supersede state code. Oh, is so, that where the problem is? Uh, that's where a lot of the problem is. And then the um, West Virginia Department of Ed comes down on us because we're too strict with discipline. 
which, as a matter of fact, they did. Who um, established the discipline? I realize state code or state board of education, but when it gets down to the local level, if there's a push and shove between the superintendent and the school board, how does this resolve? Or, or I assume there would be differences between the superintendent and the school board. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, we're working on that. We have established a discipline committee, which we have and some administrators on, uh, meaning principals, uh, assistant principals, and parents, uh, and, and an attorney. And um, we're l going over those discipline policies and, and also explaining those discipline policies to uh, especially the non-educators that aren't familiar with them and hopefully you know maybe somehow we can but, get those uh, policies toughened through legislation okay somehow. but I'm talking about yeah I realize the school uh, the uh, state board of education the legislators all put their guidance or their what they you have to follow but if it comes down to some disagreement between the local school board and the local school superintendent. Who has the final word between the two? Well, the superintendent's employed by the board. Okay. So, uh, but we, you know, we, we try not to use that heavy hand. Yeah. We try to work together, especially on something like this, because, um, you know, you have to discipline within the bounds of the code. And I know I keep going back to that, but that's what it goes back yeah. to. You can only do what you can do. You need to talk to Delegate Hornby. Yeah. Get some I'm, things changed. I, I've talked to Amy Grady a lot about some things, and and I really like her. I think she does a great job, but it's hard for her to even, she's from Mason County, and then to experience what we experience in Berkeley County, it's very difficult sometimes for them to understand. She seems very impressive. The few times we've had her on the show, uh, very impressive, very knowledgeable. Oh, she's yeah, very good yeah. to talk to, and, and, you know, she's a teacher, so mm -hmm. she gets it. So She's in the classroom. But mm -hmm. I was telling her how difficult it was. I appreciate them putting the aides in first through third grade. This year we're starting with fir first grade, but that— Is that specific to Berkeley County Schools is no, where you're starting? No, that's across on? the state. Oh, I thought it was an option. Any school district could pick first to third grade wherever they wanted well, to put them. Well, that could be, but we're, we're doing first. I thought the state started with first, but I think you're right. It is an option, okay. but we're starting with first grade. But then our, most of our special ed aides are jumping to the first grade positions. So then that leaves a big void. I'm not a teacher. I'm not an educator. Never have been. But it just seems to me, and tell me where the logic breaks down. If we have a superintendent, I'm not no personalities involved locally. If we have superintendent who vows to support their principals, like the, of, the, of the schools, and we have principals who vow to support the teachers, doesn't that solve the problem in terms of, of discipline? And you take out corporal punishment, you know, the, the, the assaulting kids and all of that, but just in terms of holding kids accountable, if the teacher is empowered to hold the, kid account uh, the kids accountable and they're confident their principal will side with them and the principal confident that the superintendent will side with them. Doesn't that solve the problem? It sounds like it would, but, you know, sometimes that doesn't happen because um, you can only put a student out so many times, especially special needs students, because, every, you know, we all want kids in the classroom. So we can put them in, in school suspension. Sorry. You know, does that solve the issue? Um, many times no because they're still not in their regular classroom so it, it's a difficult road to hoe when you're trying when you're trying to discipline kids yeah and, and, and suspension is kind of the weird one because if it's a kid that doesn't want to be in class suspension is sort of the reward yes and that's so we very much so try not to do that because you know sometimes that's what students want they want um out but and there are things that we that they have to be suspended for that uh, discipline's got so much worse than just back talking or you know what we were used to um, it's it's rough is it the, you blame the the COVID closures on a lot of this that kids just got used I to I think not it being... started before COVID I think we blame a lot on COVID but it started before that it really got worse during COVID I'll ask you a money question here Jackie uh, before we get to the one about parks and rec from Jeff Haddix what is the justification for the Board of Education to spend $1 million to consultants for principals. Couldn't more have uh, this, there have been a mentoring program uh, less costly uh, that could have been pursued? 
Well, that was is, a, is that an accurate amount of money, by the way? Yeah, I think it was uh, 1.2, as a matter of fact, something like that. Okay. Um, we, we discussed that issue, um, and it's not it, – it's over a several years period of time, so it's not like we're spending $1. million for one year. But um, we need to try to get these our test scores up in and, and any way that we can um, work to do that. And any way that we can get information and uh, someone from the outside looking in at us to tell us what we might be doing wrong, I think we need it. What, what I have hoped it was less costly, for sure, yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm really not familiar with this, but reading Jeff's comment, consultant for principals, what does that mean? What are they? Uh, well, it won't just be I know what the words mean, but yeah. what, what's, the, what's the program? These... Uh, this consulting group will be in the school, uh, all of our schools, 180 days, you know. To do not, what? To, to uh, Besides consult. What, what, what are they well, going to Well, they'll be working with on? principals first. On, on what? What issues? Um, well, instruction, you know, um, our test scores, how, how, what we're doing, how we're getting it across to our students, what we're lacking in. Um, many things go into why our test scores aren't where they are. Uh, is it, of course, it's student absences. You can't teach a student if they're not in school, but there's more to it than that. So. But this is something Berkeley County is doing independent of the rest of the state, or the rest of the state doing the same thing? Well, there's about six or eight counties that are using this group. We're not just the only With one. With the same consultant group? Yes. How many years does this cover, roughly, Jackie? I think it was three years. Three-year program? Yeah. At the end, who's in charge of looking at the data and coming up with a better way to do things? Well, ultimately, that information will come down to the board, and hopefully our teaching and learning department, and uh, Tana Burkhardt is assistant superintendent of that department, and Mr. Stevens, and um, the board will be um, versed on that continuously to see where we are. With it. Was any of this money from a grant, or is it all from the basic budget? Uh, it was from uh, uh, FSERF money, COVID money. COVID money, okay, yeah. very good. Is oh. all, has all that been spent, by the way? Um, we have one more year. One more year, and yeah. how much How much of the funds are remaining, do you know? I think they, uh, they told us $15 million. and I could be wrong on that. Um, I think that's what it was. Now, is that in Berkeley County? Yes. Okay, so $15 million of COVID money over the full period of time or is that 15 million just the last that's year? that's our so? last year last year yeah. and do you have any idea in total how much covid money there was i think totally we had 60 million golly bill there's a lot of money yeah, a lot of money are you getting your money's worth out of it i think we got our money's worth out of it we did a lot of good things with it uh, some of that was mental health correct yes, yes. counselors uh, and such um uh interventionists counselors social workers um you know, we've. The problem is when you know your COVID funds run out, yeah. then you have to either absorb these people or keep them on the payroll. So, um, with maybe attrition, we hope that we can keep some of them. Now, Jackie, was there any oversight of how you decided how to spend the COVID money? And what I'm getting up to, and I've forgotten the name of the county now that was recently uh, found they had abused the COVID money. Uh, and I suspect there been a temptation among all counties to take some liberties to how the money should be spent. Was there oversight, somebody looking over and say you, you should not have done this? There were very strict guidelines to what you could use the COVID money for. And uh, if you wanted to even change a line item in it, it was my understanding from Betty Ann Pell, who's over federal programs, that you, know, you, ha you had to go through a process to even get a change made for your COVID money. So how it was misused like that, it's beyond me. It's, it's a very strict process. But there's a, a strict process, but that's not did not answer my question about oversight. Was there someone that reviewed what you did and, uh, uh, and passed judgment? Well, the, our treasurer reviewed what we did along with... Our the, treasurer the, at the state? Our treasurer, county treasurer. Okay. But uh, along with... Uh, Who's the, the county treasurer? Jim Butts. Oh, within the school system? Yes. Uh, but along with, there was a person, there's a person uh, with the 
uh, w, uh, West Virginia Department of Education that is an over all the COVID funds. So, you know, we answer to them also, and they'll quickly let you know if your COVID funds weren't spent properly. So there is there an active audit of how the funds have been spent? I know, and again, give me a hand with the school that that county that had problems. Umpshire. Uh, Umpshire County, okay. Uh, so their their problems are pretty severe. Yes. Uh, and I just, my, I'm, I'm curious if that spread over to other counties. Well, and if there was st- some state oversight that should have picked all this up. I, I would think that their county treasurer would have picked some of that up um and i definitely um i mean the state picked theirs up but it was a little too late so yeah but so the the treasurer would be within the school system itself that's kind of having and nothing against jim i don't know him uh but it they, a little bit like a fox in the hen house do you not need a third should the system not have a third party that's not that's disengaged well, we have a uh, we have an audit every year of our books by an outside auditor. So, uh, but that's just to be sure the dollars or our dollars match up with, with what you yes. propose. It does not address the point of how the money or what programs the money was spent on. Well, you have to you have to submit your reports to the federal government um, often, yeah. and you also have to submit your paperwork to the Department of Ed. So, I mean, I would think that's where the their catch is the problem is i think sometimes it's uh, a little bit before uh those that paperwork's um let's stay on money jackie yeah. and talk about parks and rec with lambert pool not being open this summer it's uh, aggravated a lot of people city yes. residents i know that the boe gives money to parks and recreation as part of your budget it comes out and, and it helps to supplement the parks and rec budget uh, any thoughts you've had on uh, what's been happening with Parks and Rec and Lambert Pool and the future of Lambert Pool. And I know there was also a question you had about some of the statements Councilman Baker made regarding money from the Board of Ed. Well, and either I misunderstood Jason or um, uh, I thought he meant that uh, Berkeley County Schools only gave Parks and Recs or funded Parks and Recs $4,000, but we fund Parks and Recs $112,500, and then uh, he's he said that we paid Shepard four. Th- he told me he said he paid Shepard four thousand dollars for the use of the pool, which last year we paid him ten thousand. So and that's so the kids can have swim meets there and such. Yes, um, but you know the the issue with Lambert is it's it's a tough situation. You know we need something in the North End for kids. Um, uh, you know I would like to see um, a something with I think Steve talked about this. Steve Catlett with. Um, entities going together and coming up with some type of complex so that it could be used uh, by many mm-hmm. not just kids in the north end or not just kids at war memorial um i, I think the county this size and we're growing that we have to be able to do something like that we're behind the eight ball on some of that stuff the school system is involved with parks and rec from what I understand it, uh, among other reasons, one, some of your gyms are used by Parks and Rec, right? Yes. And mm-hmm. I think the over, is it the oversized gyms that uh, are used specifically? Yes, from what I know. And do you do they pay you reimbursement for use of those gyms, or is that part of the contribution you make to cover who works there while Parks and Rec is using it? I don't know the exact answer to that, but I, I don't think that they pay us. Uh, I can't, I can't mm-hmm. answer that. I don't know. Is, has the board increased its contribution to Parks and Rec over the years? Oh, yeah. I remember when I was employee at, at one time, it was $40,000. So, you know, it's increased periodically. And so. it was increased in the last 10 years to keep Lambert Pool open, correct? Yes. Right? Yeah. That obviously hasn't worked. Go ahead, uh, John. I was just going to, going back to what was discussed, the hornet's nest that uh, Nate Harmon kicked a few months ago in terms of physical security in schools and that sort of thing. Here we're coming up on a new school year. Are we good? Have we made the fixes? And, and um, we, we can't make all the fixes. <laughs> uh, we're definitely working on fixes. As a matter of fact, the sheriff did a uh, train, safety training with the principals. Um, I, I don't remember what day it was, but 
fairly recently. Yeah, it was it was really good. As a matter of fact, I, I think Damon went in the morning, Pat Murphy and I went in the afternoon, and we participated. So, and I know the principals liked it. I heard from them. So, but you know, we are uh, working on the safe school entrances, some of the man traps that. Um, we have safe school entrances, but definitely we think some of them needed worked on and additions, additional things added to those safe school entrances. Um, we're, we're working as fast as we can with that, um, you know, by hiring out and contracting out and doing what we can with uh, our county employees. So we're working hard. There was a would-be attack that was thwarted recently because of a hardened entrance and the school did not let the person in and you hope that that's the way the system works everywhere. Yes. Right? That yeah. wasn't here. Yeah. No, no, that was no. not here. Uh, Jackie, we're uh, just about out of time. I want to thank you very much for coming in and, uh, of course, for being the transporter of the goods Ron sends with you. Yes. I'll try to make it uh, something that's maybe a little bit more nutritional. <laughs> no, that's okay. I don't, think that's a, I don't think that's the way he thinks. I don't so. think it is either. <laughs> Final minute next.